Oh, there's a candle company that's doing Sanderson sister candles. <gasps> oh. Yeah. I yeah, like, Hocus Pocus I'm candles. surprised I haven't seen more Hocus Pocus stuff roll out because the movie comes out next week. Like, next week. Like, where is the Carvel? I want the Carvel again. Like, it was good. I want more. Hell, where's the Happy Meal toys? Uh, you you took the words right out of my mouth. That's house. what I want to know. Yeah, I, right. Give me something. Give me uh, Winnie's teeth that I can put in. Absol- absolutely. As a Happy Meal toy. <laughs> absolutely. Give me a blonde wig. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Poor Unfortunate Podcast. I'm Connor Perkins. And I'm Caroline A. Meddy. Wow. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm so, we're so sorry. Welcome back to any old listeners. It's so great having you with us here again. And welcome, as always, to any new listeners. It is great to have you with us. Please take a moment to hit follow or subscribe wherever you're listening to the podcast. That way, all of our podcast episodes download right to your device when they drop so you don't miss out on anything. And make sure to leave a five-star rating and a review at the end of the episode. And for the existing listeners, if you haven't done this, please do it. I know we owe you an apology for how long it has been (laughs) since an episode dropped, but please do not hold it against us for trying here. We really are. Oh, my God. Yeah, please subscribe so that whenever, on whatever schedule new episodes come out, you don't even have to think about it. It'll download right to your device. That's the way to go with the way things have been going with us. Yeah. Sorry. Y'all, no, we're, we're very sorry, but let us just explain for a moment what's been going on. So, I don't know, just a lot. Like, uh, there has been a lot of traveling for both of us. Um, I just had COVID. It finally got me for the first time and knocked the freaking wind right out of me. Um, but, you know, aside from all that boring stuff, there's been something extremely cool going on um, that's kept Connor just just a little bit busy. So I'll let him tell us what it is. Yeah, I feel like it's my fault that (laughs) everything has gotten so messed up. I uh, have been sitting on this news for about a month and a half now, but I am a new recurring guest star uh, resident doctor on Chicago Med on NBC. (laughs) So uh, I have been flying back and forth to Chicago. (laughs) Wow, let's just take a moment and like... It's so exciting. What a sentence. Like, let's just take a minute. So absolutely yeah. thrilled and so proud of you. Ah, what? Oh, ah, it's just such you. great news. Ah, my God. So I'd say a pretty legitimate reason to not be able to do poor unfortunate podcasts. Yeah, I have to drop everything at the drop of the hat. Literally, right before we sat down to record, they told me you have to get on a plane tomorrow morning. So <laughs> uh that's that's what's happening. Oh um, man. But thank you for sticking it out. Thank you for coming back to us. I promise you, as we are able to get these episodes out as much as we can on that regular schedule, we will we will try to keep it to that bi-weekly schedule for you. But if it does happen that we miss a week, know that's probably my fault. Know that I feel terrible about it. And as mad as you are, I'm even madder about it. (laughs) And we'll we'll figure it out and we'll get your content back to you. We promise. So, Caroline, uh, (laughs) what's new? Oh, God. So, you know, as if it wouldn't be tricky enough after about a month or so passing since we last spoke, um, D23 happened. So there's there's just (laughs) absolutely... Of course, all the announcements. Yeah, yeah. There's absolutely no way for us to get through all of the news. We will link you to some fantastic sources that will just break down all of the news all in one place for you. Or you can also watch on Disney+. Plus. They have the recaps of each day of the I actually want to do that. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, that's a great idea. So we figured since there's no way to cover it all, um, we're just going to share some of our favorite tidbits from D23 and our favorite pieces of news um, and 
that's that's what we'll do for this portion. That sounds good to y'all. So, yeah, Connor, what was sticking out for you? All right. So I have a list of five things that yeah. stood out to me. Not for one thing is better or one thing is worse. We got the trailer for Disenchanted with the mm. whole damn original cast of Enchanted back in it. Yeah. It looked great to me. Yeah. I thought it was fun. It f- still kept in the spirit of the original movie. That's coming to Disney Plus on November 24th. The trailer, it, it was it was great to me. I really I really liked it. Yeah. It made me more confident in this movie than I was before, especially with it going right to a Disney Plus streaming release. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh no, are they cutting corners with it?" And it doesn't really look like they did. Yeah. So, I'm excited. I have on my list also just sort of the Disney game showcase in general. This Mm, happened on Friday. Yeah. It was largely underwhelming. Okay. But there is an among the announcements, there there's a new Marvel video game that's in development set in World War II with Captain America and Black Panther, which sounds freaking awesome. It's inspired by a comic book limited series called Captain America, Black Panther, Flags of Our Fathers. The image shared of the game looks like we're in Paris and possibly Wakanda as well in the uh. game. I just think it sounds dope as hell. But also, we got an announcement that there's more characters being added to Disney Speedstorm. That's the racing game that has yet to launch. A Tron video game and a 2D co-op platformer game. So a platformer game that's kind of like Super Mario Brothers. And that's with Mickey and Friends called Illusion Island that will be exclusively for the Nintendo Switch. Which, like, hell yes, give that to me now. Mm, Wait, pause. Speaking of the Switch... A friend and listener, Chase, brought this up to me, and I've now I've now that he's mentioned it, I'm probably just noticing. Dreamlight it now. Valley. Yes, what, a Dreamlight Valley. Have you? Yes. Do you have it yet? That's so you. I haven't gotten it because it's basically like Animal Crossing, but Disney. Yeah, but Disney. Yeah, and I feel like I'm cheating on my villagers in <gasps> Animal Crossing because oh. I have not faced them in months. <laughs> So I'm like before I did, before Damn. I download Dreamlight Valley, I think I got to I think I got to take some time with my village and just oh, make, make room I, for a, for a, a side piece. I'm literally only going to get it if I, if you get it, so let me know and then I will get it. <laughs> okay. Girl, it'll probably happen. So All right. Let's be real about All this. Right. Other thing, there were really no new announcements for projects coming to Walt Disney World. There were a lot of announcements that were happening around the parks, but New projects coming to Walt Disney World, not really. We got to see the model for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which to me felt a little lackluster because Mm. they cut the Mama Odie tree from the top of the hill that was part of the concept design. Yeah. And then the folks at Disney, they did the weirdest thing on stage and just started talking in hypotheticals about what we could add. Yeah, like they're talking about a major build out, probably the biggest expansion to ever happen to Magic Kingdom behind Frontierland with a new land that might include a villains area and Encanto and Coco. It's like not only is it blue skying, but it's just like these things are so at the early stages because those things don't belong there or together. Yeah, so like, don't and they admitted us. they're like, we're in our thought genesis. And oh, I'm like, do not tell us your share. thoughts right now. No, tell no. us when you've got something. No. And I know it's because they felt bad that there really wasn't anything yeah. coming to Disney World. But then they also started blue skying Zootopia and Moana where Dino Land is. Yeah, and I'm like, Animal don't Kingdom, take away my Dino Land. Which, don't kid around about taking away my Dino I Land. I mean, we know Dino Land is... It's hard pressed for this world once they started like getting rid of some of those carnival rides, which the carnival rides never should have been there. Like, uh, let's yeah, be real. But like, yeah. wh- why are we? Why are we so quick to be like, oh, Moana, when we still don't have Beastly Kingdom? Hello, oh my god, or Dino Land built out to be the way that it was supposed to. Uh, it's just baffling. I'm like, why are you blue skying when we have plans like on the back burner? Like, yeah. Ugh. yeah. So it was just really freaking weird. None of these announcements are set in stone. Disney World really has nothing coming to it other than we're getting the Hatbox Ghost in the Haunted Mansion, which, like, yay. Yeah. But you can't stand in front of us at D23 and be like, we're going to give you some opening dates of rides that are way overdue, and we're going to give you an animatronic, and we're going to call it (laughs) a day. No, you're not going to do that. Because meanwhile, every non-American park is getting a Frozen theme plan. Yo, And a shit ton of new things. Um. My fourth thing on my list, 
This is something I'm really excited for, so we can take an upturn here. Disney Animation's new musical, Wish, was announced, featuring music Mm. by Julia Michaels. And she's of the song Issues. She also writes for a lot of pop stars, so that's the I Got Issues, that one. That's her. And it's starring Academy Award winner Ariana DeBose as Asha. And Alan Tudyk as a talking goat named Valentino. And it tells the origin of the wishing star. And so we also got Ariana DeBose singing the song more for us at the panel, which you can go on YouTube and you can watch it. And Mm. I think it's good. I'm still... I'm still processing the song, but... Oh my God, I haven't listened to the song yet. I gotta go do that. I gotta go do that. Yeah. But the highlight for me of D23, the whole thing was the celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Muppets Christmas Carol, which was hosted by drag queen Nina West, who's like my favorite drag queen. They announced that the song When Love Is Gone, which was cut from the master of the theatrical release and lost until a few years ago, it has been recovered and it is being put back into the film and you can see it in the updated version of the film starting December 11th, 2022, which December 11th is the 30th anniversary. So for those of you who had the VHS release, uh, you might remember this because it was in the VHS release, but it was cut from the theatrical release for time because kids were getting bored, which mm. like, fuck the kids. But... <laughs> oh, we're that podcast now. <laughs> um. <laughs> but you'll remember that this is the song it's in the Christmas past sequence and it's sung by Belle to young Scrooge and then it yeah. gets reprised with the love we found at the end which takes on so much more meaning when you get the original song that we're reprising <laughs> but we have it now yeah, um, I love that uh, I'm so excited I'm so excited also the Muppets like sh- panel I, uh, was like the best part okay, of the whole thing. The people that. who were there were even saying like the Muppets panel was the best part of the whole wow. weekend. Okay. Okay. Got to catch up on that. Yeah. So those are my five D23. What do you got? Well, for me, far and away, the most thrilling thing of D23 of my month was getting the teaser for the little mermaid. Let me tell you, I wish somebody had a camera set up in my home for when I laid my eyes on that, I, I <laughs> don't even have words. I also, when I started watching it, I'm like, oh my God, it's gorgeous. I see her tail and I'm like, ah, oh, these fuckers, like, we're not going to see her. They're going to hold off letting us see her till so long. It's the wave for me. The wave at the very beginning. Oh, that wave, mm. that wave. And then we not only see her, but we hear her. And that, the look on her, I I can't even, I literally was talking to one of my friends about this and I started crying. I, she looks amazing, like the look on her face, the, the, the perfectly done riff. I, (laughs) this is going to destroy me. It's going to destroy me. (laughs) And the people who were at D23 got (gasps) to see the whole part of your world so I'm so upset. And just, like, knowing who the rest of the cast is, I literally can't wait. Like, every little tidbit they give me, I'm going to gobble it up. I can't wait. Uh, So that, I mean, nothing could top that for me. But something that did come close for me personally is the fact that Happily Ever After is returning to the Magic Kingdom in 2023. We're going to get into why this thrills me so much in this actual episode. So I won't say much more, but it's what we need. Um, It's what my soul needs. Um, I can't wait to go back and finally, like, see the fireworks show that belongs. And so another happy thing on my list is just such an unexpected surprise in Inside Out 2 in June 2024. Yeah. I just, like, I adored Inside Out. So many Pixar movies get a sequel. This one is an amazing one. It should get a sequel, too. And it's such a, you know, the credits set us up perfectly for seeing Riley as a teenager. And they've teased that there are going to be some new emotions. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying there's got to be, like, lust or something, you know, to that effect since she'll be a teenager. And call me. I'm available. (laughs) <laughs> I'm I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> so then the two-ish things on my list that I'm like feeling disappointed about, you kind of touched on them already. So the blue skying of the Magic Kingdom expansion that could feature Coco and Kanto and villains just like really bothered me. It was so – it's such a lazy idea. The things don't go near each other. 
I am. I'm okay with villains. That would make some yes, sense. Yes, but I'm not convinced that Coco and Encanto areas belong in, in Magic Kingdom. I'm just like, it just felt so off to me and it felt yeah. like a cheap thing. Ugh, I didn't and like, like it. Listen, I'm not, I'm not in favor of people just like overlaying every single pavilion in Epcot with yeah. something. Like, that's not what I'm saying. But when Coco is a movie that is literally about Mexican culture. Yeah. And would be a gateway into the Mexico Pavilion, like, in a way that no other movie really would tie in. It fits so perfectly with the Mexico Pavilion, where it's not taking away from, like, the educational aspect of that pavilion. It would just be another dimension to it, like... I, I'm, that's where it, that's where it goes. Like, let where the volcano is, that backdrop, let that be, like, the Marigold Bridge into the world of the dead, where you can see that from the <gasps> But you're going to take in. my vol- – don't take my volcano, though. The volcano is everything We can leave me. the volcano. We okay. can leave the volcano. Okay. Yeah, and then, like, I don't know. We talked about it, too, but, like, Moana, Animal Kingdom, I just don't know. I'm not feeling – I'm not – feeling right about any of that but we all know moana goes in adventureland yeah like, yeah and like moana journey of water and epcot even that i'm coming around to i just things being unclear it was tough for me but i will end on a positive note and i will say um that there is they announced um a new ride coming to avengers campus in disneyland um in which you will be fighting alongside the avengers against king thanos and that sounds exciting. They haven't really said anything about the format, but I like it. That's at least that was a solid, you know, ride drop that's coming. I can get behind that. So, like we said, there's so much there, you know, we couldn't cover it all, but that's some of the big stuff. Yeah. And then the last thing outside of D23 that I just want to mention. So, Currently on Disney Plus TV shows, we've got Andor. That has premiered. We have She-Hulk going, which, let me just say, that is freaking amazing. And it's tied with WandaVision for my favorite thing that Marvel has done recently. It's so good. Those are out on Disney Plus. Have you watched it, Caroline? I wasn't going to, to be completely honest. You will love She-Hulk. Really? You will love it. Oh. Love it. Okay. It is my everything right now because when I'm like, I need something that's just going to make me laugh, something light, something yeah. 30 minutes, something that feels part of a bigger thing, but really is just its own thing and like making fun of that thing that it's a part of, that's She-Hulk. Oh, okay. okay. So everybody watch She-Hulk if you ain't doing it. And to all the haters of She-Hulk out there, sorry, you're wrong. You just are. Wow, okay. Pinocchio right. is out on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, I'm going to watch Looks that this like weekend. Looks like Nightmare it, do- it does, but I'm going to watch it just because I'm just so curious. I've got to watch it. Shannon started it, and she stopped it like 15 minutes in. I don't think you can pay me enough oh, money no. to watch that movie. But maybe you can. I'll report back. Hocus Pocus 2 comes out September 30th on Disney+. Plus. Thor, wow. Love and Thunder is now on Disney+. Plus. That was part of the Disney Plus Day celebration. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever comes out November 11th. And we got the official trailer for Disney Animation's Strange World, which comes mm. out November 23rd. And mm. that stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Dennis Quaid, yeah. Lucy Liu. Yeah. Looks like a good time. Yeah. Phew. It's, there's a lot. Yeah. That's all the Disney news that we've got for you. I know that's a lot uh, more than usual, but we've also been away longer for more than usual. And there has been an obscene <laughs> amount of news in that time. Yeah. But today it's our tips and tricks episode. And we're going to do something that's kind of different. We haven't really done this before. Caroline just went on a trip to Disney World. And oh my God. First time since having the podcast. Like, yeah. wow, crazy. Yeah. I'm planning a trip to Disney World as well. And there are a lot of you who either have never been or haven't been in a while or go all the time. So we wanted to do this like QA session almost with Caroline, where I've created a whole bunch of different questions. And she's going to just sort of like walk us through her trip, her experience of being in Disney World for the 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Don't worry if you're not a Disney Parks person or if you are a person who has never been to Disney World and then whenever we talk about this, this means nothing to you. I put questions in there that will still make it fun for you so that you can have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, Because I'm aware of that. I don't want anyone to feel left out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's dive in. Yeah. Walters right now. Uh, first off, Caroline, welcome to the pod. 
Get out of here. Why don't you give us an overview of just sort of like what your trip to Disney was, like number of days, where you stayed, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Just so that we have our baseline. Baseline, baby. Okay. So went for a whole week, which is just amazing. And I feel like, you know, especially with everything that's new, even having been a ton of times in my life, like I felt like it was so necessary. So We stayed at Saratoga Springs, so I'm very, very fortunate and blessed and privileged that my parents are part of Disney Vacation Club, and we haven't been back in so long. We haven't been back since uh, 2018, so we've got all these points building up. So um, my parents brought me along to stay at Saratoga Springs, me and my fiance, which was so, so nice. Um, We've stayed there before. so So were they at Boardwalk and you were at Saratoga? No, we were all in one place. So, yes. So, we're our home resort for DVC is the boardwalk. And it will always be like, I think it'll always be my favorite. I still have yet to stay at like Polynesian and other fun places like that. But boardwalk always have a very special place in my heart. But our usual alternative when boardwalk is filled, which it was, um, is Saratoga Springs. So, it still feels a little bit homey too. And it is a big, uh, it's the biggest resort. And We've had some, that's like the golf course one. Yeah, exactly. It's gigantic. Um, it's like you know most hotels are like two buildings, one building. This is buildings on buildings on buildings, and um, we've had some we've had some tough experiences at Saratoga Springs before because we ended up in a building that was like literally not near anything. And the thing about Saratoga Springs as well is if you're using the Disney buses you know, there are multiple stops within the actual resort itself before you're even out of the resort and on your way to the park. So it can be very, it can be a lot, but we got so lucky this time for two reasons. Number one, we were in a building that was facing, and I'll I'll put up pictures of everything. It was amazing. That was facing um, Disney Springs. So it was right on the water. I could walk off the porch of, we were on the first floor too. So I could walk straight out of my bedroom and be on the path leading to Disney Springs from Saratoga Springs. It was oh, it was wow. amazing. But what I will say as well that made it really helpful um, is usually we go down there and we use Disney buses. Back in the day, we used the Magical Express. But this time we rented a car. It was for a bunch of different reasons. Number one, you know, Magical Express is gone. Got to get to and from the airport anyway. And, you know, um, my parents had just gotten over COVID. We were trying to take it easy. I hadn't gotten it at that point. So I was feeling nervous about being crammed into the buses. So we rented a car and that actually at Saratoga Springs ended up being so helpful because, um, you know, the main building, for example, where the store and the food and the pool and all that stuff are, we took the car over there because it would have been a long walk and it was hot. Mm. So if you're going to rent a car, Saratoga Springs is the is the resort to do it at. Just like I said, getting to the main building, but also, you know, there's individual parking lots outside of each building. So you can park right by your front door. You don't have to walk through an entire hotel to get to your room. So how was much nice. was parking? This is the thing. Note this. So if you are DVC, parking is free, which is a nice perk. I forget. I want to say it's 25 a day if you are not. And then parking at the parks. If you are a Disney resort guest, it is free. Uh, if you're coming not from a Disney hotel, I think it's about the same. Dep- of course, we'll get into this too. But depending on where you want to park and how close you want to park, there's a range of prices that you could pay. So keep it, keep that in mind. Renting a car can be really useful, again, depending on your comfortability with the buses, uh, which hotel you're staying at, if you're DVC and you can get it for free. Um, definitely something to consider. So it was our first time trying it out, and I'm glad that we did. So just wherever you rent from, if you do, make sure that it says that they have a desk in the airport so that you're not being shuttled to some outside location. I've got to say so many people were like, oh, get ready. You know, the parking at the parks, you're going to really walk. Don't get me wrong. At Magic Kingdom, it's beyond true. But we'll talk about the hacks to get around that. But at some of the parks, it really wasn't bad at all. And it was it was worth it to like me and my family have hustled so many times when we see our resort bus coming and we've got to run to the bus stop. I'm I'm too old for that. So this was great. Like it was I think now that my parents are older, I'm older, like uh, we were ready to like in that aspect at least take it a little bit easier and so that helped us not exhaust ourselves a bit, which was great. Okay. 
Yeah. And then how many days in the park did you do? Like what, what parks did you go to? Yes. What rest days, pool days, that sort of thing. Like what, what was that like? You know what? I will say usually my family and I are really good about building like the rest day into the middle of the week. And this whole, and we'll get into this too in terms of things that have changed, but this whole park reservation system had us all kinds of messed up because we reserved a park for every day. And so, like, you can't help, even though it's crazy what happens. Like, you've been there a thousand times, but you feel compelled. Like, we we were burning out a little bit midweek, and we definitely took it slow. Like, we took a day in the middle of the week where... We were like, we're not going to get up early. Like, we weren't getting up crazy early. Um, But we were like, we're really going to take it slow. We're not going to get to the parks till the late afternoon. My mom and I walked over to Disney Springs. We picked up some Everglaze donuts. We just, like, had like had a really chill breakfast. We ended up hitting the pool, I think, that day, maybe at night. I think we ended up going. But, yeah, we went – we did end up going to the parks every day. And I will say, so we visited – did we hit everything two times? We did end up going to every park twice, and I've got to say, like, and again, I'll be saving a little bit of this for later, too, but the second time that we ended up at Magic Kingdom, for example, it was, like, middle of the day. We were kind of trying to go back and see a couple of things that we had missed the first go-around, and it was so jammed that we literally were there and we didn't end up doing anything. Like, we went to, like, the confectionery, and... We had like some lunch and we took some pictures in front of the castle and we left. And I think that part of it is because we were getting tired. Like the nice thing is, and I've been, I think I probably told you this. I don't remember if I did, if I don't know if I could hold it in, but we, you know, after you and I talked about Hoopty Doo on the podcast last season, I was like, oh my God, we got to go back to Hoopty Doo. And there were just no reservations to be had. So we're like, okay, sad. And I was, one thing that we figured out too is, with the park reservation system. So we had reserved a park every day, which you have to do. And we also reserved dining every day somewhere just so we had it. And I realized midway through the trip, I was like, it's kind of like, if there's not a restaurant we're dying to go to, let's cancel it. And you have to do it 24 hours before, just FYI. Let's cancel it because it kind of holds you to a park. And if you want a park hop, it just makes it harder. It's a whole thing. So we canceled one of our reservations and I'm on the Disney app looking around. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe there's something else we want to do. And there was freaking hoopty freaking do for the next day. And it was amazing. And we actually ended up being able to go to hoopty do, which I'll talk about. But that ended up being a nice break too, because getting to hoopty do is a whole process, getting to that part of Fort Wilderness that it's in. So that was felt like a little bit of a break in the week too. That was like we were there Saturday to Saturday. That was Thursday. So most of that day was focused on like, you know, really like getting, you know, a dre- little bit dressed up for dinner, making our way to hoop do that whole, that whole thing. But yeah, we were in the parks every day, not on Saturday when we arrived and not on the Saturday when we left. We usually reserve those days for Disney Springs, which we did. So when we got there on Saturday, we ate at the boathouse and then on the Saturday we left, we were able to grab a um, Wine Bar George brunch reservation. So really like, got to look around Disney Springs, which there's so much to see there. So that was nice. Nice. Uh, well, on that same topic of dining, did you try any new restaurants or what was the best dining experience from the trip? Oh, my God. I have to say, don't worry, I'll have some critical things to say as well. But the dining like was just like 10 out of 10 overall. <laughs> Like, it, I, I didn't have a bad thing to eat. So, I mean, it was interesting. Like, we were um, there during Food and Wine Festival. So, got to have a couple of things from there. Usually with Food and Wine, I'm like, I've never had anything that's wow. But this time, I had from the France booth, like, a cheese beignet. And it was so good. So, I had a good experience with Food and Wine this time. We had some other things that, for me, were just fine. But um, we tried the new Space 220 restaurant uh, in Epcot. Yeah. And I cannot believe I'm saying this. Like, my dad wanted to go to that. My dad loves space. He wanted to be an astronaut when he was a kid. So my dad wanted to go. And I was like, Dad, like, it's going to be – it's not going to be good. And we went for lunch. And I can't believe I'm saying this. The food was outstanding. There you go. It's it's a pre-fee menu. So, like, you pick – you whether you go for lunch or dinner, you pick from, you know – appetizer and an entree for lunch 
And I had one of the best steaks that I've ever had in my life at Space 220. <laughs> Disney steak Disney is steak. unreal. Disney, because the best steak that I had in my entire life was at Be Our Guest. I remember you always talking about that. I know. And it was the best steak. And I'm forever trying to chase this steak. And <laughs> I'm always disappointed. You might find it at Space 220. This one had like, it, it was steak free. So it came with fries and it had this chimichurri sauce oh my god it was unbelievable well and also like the theming the atmosphere of it how was that like it was really cool i'm i'm not like and we also just like had a great server who was super into it and like you take the ride to space and you take the ride back it was just great and i think for us too it was like you know it was we went for lunch it was a great break in the afternoon like in somewhere cool and kind of dim like it was it was the right thing for us at that moment and it's over by mission space right exactly yeah it's like right yeah, so like next like to the entrance to, the to the mission side. space yeah i for when we yeah. were heading there i was like i actually that's what's interesting this happened to me a few times this trip this has never happens to me but i was like i don't know which way i'm going like i don't know how to get there but yeah it's like right by the entrance to mission space so at the end of the meal we had heard our server say something to another table about, like, the coffee. And he was like, the coffee here is so good. And once again, I was still cynical. I don't know why. And I was like, uh-huh. But I was like, sure, I'll have a cappuccino. And the cappuccino was also <laughs> outstanding. Like, I I don't know what's going on in there, but something is really great is happening. So, and the food's very That's creative, wild. too. Yeah. So, I would definitely – it's on the pricier side, again, because it's, like, a pre-fee menu. But uh, if the, And I, it's a brand-new restaurant. Yes. But the food was great. So, so what can I say? And then, and then much in this, like, again, nothing we ate was bad. Like, we ate at Liberty Tree, which we've been to before, which is always delicious. Uh, always delicious. Always great. Always great. There was one time I went there when I was a kid, and I'm the type of kid, and I, I ate honey, just plain honey with my chicken nuggets. <laughs> you still do. What are you talking about? I know, I still do. I asked for honey, and the server didn't have any. And then, came back and I think they ran to some other restaurant somewhere else in the park and got honey and ran it back so that I could have it with my chicken tenders. Which like, Come on. I would never ever ask someone to do that. But this person, this cast member went above and beyond. Oh Liberty my. Street Tavern rocks. It does. And that's always good. And we've been there before. We went back to prime time where we've been before. That was good. But in terms of new stuff, Another, um, we went to Nine Dragons in the China Pavilion, which we'd never been to before. Yeah, I had something delicious there as well. And then another amazing surprise of the trip. Looking ahead when we booked dining in advance, couldn't get into Oga's Cantina. And then once again, the day before, lo and behold, I was like, let me just look. And sure, we went to Oga's Cantina at like 10 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> but we went. Holy hell. I was, let me tell you. The the drink that I ordered there, it, that experience was amazing. The drink that I ordered was not only delicious, it knocked me on my ass. Oh. I was walking through Galaxy's Edge after like, holy shit. <laughs> like, and I can hold oh, my, my wow. alcohol and it knocked me. Like, it was called... Oh, gosh. I'll look up the name for all of you, but it's the one that's Was it green. one of those, like, sneaky knock you on your feet? It where like you can't like, taste it and then kind it hits of, you all at it, once. Because this one had this this one had like um it had like half and half in it. So it was like this like milky drink. So it's very it surprised oh. me. Because you're like, oh, this isn't gonna have alcohol in it. <laughs> um, what was mine called? I can't remember, but it's like kiwi. It's like a milky kiwi drink, which probably sounds gross. It's one of the best cocktails I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. (laughs) It was awesome. A milky kiwi? Yeah, I know. It sounds bad, but it's so good. If if you're there, I'll give you the name of it. Definitely try it. But like um, my family all tried different ones. Some of them are like bubbling or have boba in them. And we got this bizarro because, again, it was 10 a.m. And we were like, oh, my God, we're drinking and starving. And this has alcohol in it. We got this really bizarre, like, space charcuterie board thing where, like, you truly, like, it was on theme because you look at this thing and you don't know what you're eating. Like, I put stuff in my mouth and I didn't know what it was going to be. So it was an amazing experience. Like, if you can go in there, it was totally worth it. And, like, my parents aren't particularly huge Star Wars fans. My fiancé is obsessed and he was thrilled. But they loved it, too. So between that... I had an amazing cocktail at the boathouse with a tiny floating rubber ducky in it, which you have to get. We went to Yak and Yeti in 
Animal Kingdom, and the meal was 10 out of 10. The food at Hoopty Doo is good. Like, everything was delicious. And I, I got my freaking Gideon's cookie from Disney Springs. Mm. It was really good. But I have to say, even better was the donut that I had from Everglazed. Everglazed is the jam. I had an everything bagel donut. And it's one of the best donuts that I've ever had. So the the eats were good. Me and my mom had like five Grand Marnier slushies over the course of the week. Like we 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 ate. Everything about the dining, no notes. <laughs> no notes. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so we're still living in a time where COVID-19 is out there and messing some shit up. Yeah. Uh, what was it like to visit at this point in the pandemic? And like, what protocols did you see in place? What did you and your family do? I know you said that you took a car for mm-hmm. for that reason. Yeah. Uh, and some other ones. But what what all did you see? What was your experience of, of that? You know, it was, uh, I don't know. We, me and my family masked up everywhere. Um, when we were on the lines, we masked up. We did eat, like, as you've learned by this point, we ate indoors. I felt comfortable doing that. I felt like wherever we sat, things were spaced. We were laughing because we went to Hoop Dee Doo and you're jammed in there and everybody's also screaming the whole show. And we were like, well, if we get COVID, it's going to be the Hoop Dee Doo review. Um, but we didn't. I'm blessed. But, you know, I, for me, mentally, it was... It was tough just because, like, leading up to the trip, I was so, like, worried about getting COVID. And so, like, during the trip, I made my family, like, drink emergency every day. They were probably so tired of me at the end of the trip just because on those lines, there's no spacing. Like, I – this is a bit of a broad stroke, but there really aren't any protocols in place at the parks anymore. It's back to normal. And it's beyond back to normal. It's so crowded in these parks that – and again, I keep saying we'll get into it, but we will. But – This whole park reservation system has me especially frustrated because of that, because these parks are more crowded than I've ever seen them in my entire life. Um, You all know me. I love to do my my merch shopping. And a lot of the time, I just couldn't because the stores were just so crowded. Of course, I put my mask on and stuff, but I just didn't – I didn't like being in there. It was just so crowded. And and these lines are jammed in. Like, we waited on the standby line for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. And – You're in these tiny, tiny hallways. Pretty much, uh, I would say 90% of people don't wear a mask. At most times, if I looked around, me and my family were the only ones wearing a mask. I wouldn't change a single thing. It made me feel so much better about everything and much less worried. But, you know, I'd be lying if I said that the thought of that didn't didn't affect the trip. You know, it's like I'd be like, we'd be getting off a ride and I'd be like, everybody sanitize your hands just because it just – Again, a broad stroke. It doesn't feel like Disney is protecting people right now. And you know what? Granted, that's because most people seem to be very relaxed and don't care anymore. Yeah. I do. Me and my family do. And I can say now, after having COVID, I'm going to continue to care because I don't ever want this again. So it was it was tough. And, and another thing that helped me mentally, again... Um, staying at Saratoga Springs was super nice because all of the doors open, you know, into the outside. You're not walking through hallways. If you want to get to the main building, you're walking outside. So things like that helped me. And I, one thing I will say that's amazing is Disney hotels just so above and beyond with the cleanliness. Just like for me, the, the mental peace I had from walking in and seeing the remote control, you know, wrapped in plastic showing that it had been cleaned. Oh, nice. Um, the extra, you know, sheets for the bed. You know, every hotel has that in a bag in the closet, but this one is zip tied to show you that no one who stayed there previously opened it. And things like that, I give Disney huge credit for that because that was so nice. I felt the the room felt immaculately clean. And that was such a huge, like I mean, me, what other places I've gone this summer, I'll bring my Lysol wipes, I'll wipe it down. I didn't feel the need to do that. And that's great. Like for me, such a big part of Disney is like the escape feeling. And when it came to the resort, at least, I really did feel like I was able to to relax and feel like things were clean and taken care of, which was great. But the parks is a different story. It's a different story. So even sometimes when we were walking, like we'd be stuck in huge crowds and I would just throw the mask on because people were just like like millimeters from your face at all times. So, yeah, it was tough. Damn. Yeah, it was tough. Well, you keep saying we'll get to it, we'll get to it, but let's talk about the reservation system. Let's talk about Genie Plus. Yeah. Let's do the two big ones together. 
Ah, okay. Let's start with reservations. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, my God. I mean, you and I talk about the really awful video of those two senior citizens at Disneyland who didn't know that they needed a park reservation with their ticket and couldn't go in. And I think about that and it makes me want to just like melt. So obviously in advance, we set up all of our, our, you know, our park reservations. Like a week before we left, I was taking a look at our plans, taking a look at the park hours. And I realized on a day that we had reserved Magic Kingdom It was going to be the not-so-scary Halloween party and the park closed for everybody at 6 p.m. And I was like, no, we're not wasting the Magic Kingdom day having to leave at 6. So that required some, like, moving around. That's another thing I'll say is two of the nights that we were there, Magic Kingdom closed early and another night, Animal Kingdom closed early. And to me, that is just, like, not really cool. We're all paying, like, a lot of money to be there. And Three nights, three different nights where parks are closing early is sounds just like it's a it's a lot for me, just knowing how much things cost. So that was tough. So we moved reservations around for that reason. But another thing that I learned, did not know this was the case. So after 2 p.m. is when you are allowed to park hop. There, I don't think I actually talked to a cast member and, and I was like, have there been times where things are filled to capacity and people aren't allowed to park hop? And they were like, no you'll be able to park hop at two o'clock every day. What I didn't know is if you want to park hop, you have to stop at the first park that you reserve for the day before you can go to a different one. So one day we had reserved, I don't remember what it was. It might have been Epcot. We were trying to take it easy that day. And later we wanted to go to, I think, Magic Kingdom. So after two, we showed up at Magic Kingdom and we tapped our magic bands to get in. And they were like, nope, there's a problem. The, The cast members were very kind and they rearranged it online for us and we were able to get in. But there's nowhere telling you that that's required. I also find it a bit just like silly. Like what I have to, I would have to stop at Epcot for like what, five minutes just to say, like it starts to become the park reservation system makes this feel like a job. And for me, planning Disney is always a lot of fun. I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I know you and I are very similar in that way, Mm -hmm. but this is verging on job, not fun. Because it's just like protocol after protocol. And then it it makes dining reservations tough because you're like, okay, on this day we've got our park reservation is Epcot. The safest thing to do is to make a dinner reservation at Epcot because we know we can get Mm -hmm. into Epcot. But that's not how me and my family used to do Disney. It's like, you know, we might want to be at Epcot during the day, but we might want to have dinner in Hollywood Studios and you get nervous doing that. Yeah. Which is why, as I mentioned earlier, I I ended up canceling a reservation we had because I was like, that's going to force us to be in Epcot all day and we've done what we wanted to do at Epcot. So let's not get stuck there and let's just cancel the reservation and figure out dinner another way. It's really limiting. Um, it's I I think a lot of guests, I heard a lot of confusion around it. and. Then when it comes to Genie Plus, when I went into the parks, I was like, I'm not doing it. I was like, I refuse to buy into this. And then my mind changed for two reasons, a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to do the research for all of you and tell you how it went and how it works. And I understand it inside out now, which watching videos up and before I used it, I didn't understand it. It was very confusing. So I changed my mind because I realized um, when we first made our park reservations, we only had one day at Hollywood Studios. And I was like, there's so much we want to see there. There's so many new things. That's a Genie Plus day. So for me, my fiance, my parents, we got four. We bought Disney Genie Plus for the four of us for that day, which means that basically that's access to what was the old Fast Pass system, which is the ability to reserve a what is now a lightning lane, a Fast Pass lane pretty much for a ride. However, one of the things we also wanted to see at Hollywood Studios was Rise of the Resistance. That was top of my list. So one attraction in every park is not a part of Disney Genie Plus and is an individual Lightning Lane purchase. Now with these, the kind of cool thing about it is... And they're adding more. There's, uh, yeah, they're, like, it's at least one, but they're <clears throat> they're doing a big thing, if they haven't already, that they're shifting a bunch of rides over to that. I sucks. Okay, I'm not against it because what I'll say is it was nice. There was another day where long story short, we were going back to Animal Kingdom. We wanted to get on flight of passage. We were not going to buy it was late in the day already. We're not going to buy a Genie Plus for the day, so we bought the individual Lightning Lanes for everyone to just get on flight of passage. So, 
on top of the $15 each for Disney Genie Plus um, for the four of us, then I paid individually. This is crazy. I can't believe it. When I say it out loud, I'm like, geez, $15 each for us to get onto Rise of the Resistance. Pause. Can you can you put a price on the enjoyment of things? No. Was it was it worth it? I mean, Rise of the Resistance was amazing. So I don't know. We did what we had to do, I guess. But it's ridiculous. Like we're I'm very privileged to have been able to do that for my family, and so many families would never be able to afford that. And it's just it's not cool. Like it's just not cool. But yeah, and it's like you're paying admission for a park to then pay to ride the rides. That's too? what I'm. Like, I'm like it's starting to feel like a carnival. The yeah, then I should be able yeah. to get into the park for free, right? And. And, you know, and I bought into the hype of got to wake up at 7 a.m. to make those reservations. So I did. You don't. I will stand by whatever. Maybe it was the time of year that I went. You don't need to wake up that early. Like there will be unless it's the big ticket stuff, there will be reservations available throughout the day. But I panicked. I woke up at 7. I reserved us Millennium Falcon. So our day went. I reserved Millennium Falcon for and we weren't going to show up at the park when the park opened. So I think maybe Millennium Falcon was for 1030 or something. So then two hours had passed by the time we arrived in the park and we checked into Millennium Falcon. I had already reserved Rise of the Resistance as a separate charge. That was set. And then I was able to um, set up our reservation for Runaway Railway. So basically throughout the day, whether we checked into the ride that we had reserved a lightning lane for or two hours passed, I would just continuously make us new reservations for the next thing. And there's a satisfaction in that. Don't get me wrong. We literally got on everything we wanted to get on. Like, I didn't go on Rock and Roller Coaster again because once was enough for me, but my fiance was able to get onto <laughs> that. Like, You went on Terror of Terror this time, though, right? Uh, no, and I never will. Um, never. Just a um, frog hopper. It's, oh, God. Every time I watch videos of it, I'm like, oh, absolutely. I'll never. I'll, I will pass out. <laughs> so, Sure. It was, like, satisfying, and I felt like I made it a really nice day for my parents because I liked the idea that they could kind of just follow me. I'm like, folks, we're going on Runaway Railway next. Follow me. Like, I wanted them to be able to relax, and it was really nice in that way. But having to constantly be on my phone and, like, searching for the next thing, it's sad to me. That aspect of the park reservations and of D- Disney Genie Plus, the having to be constantly looking at your phone it's so I know that things have to change I know Disney World is not going to be the same experience because when I was a kid I was a kid and everybody was planning everything for me it'll never be that again yeah but this it made me a little sad having to just be constantly planning for the next thing it it prevents you from being in the moment a bit so I'm glad that I tried it out it was super effective especially for like the day and park that we used it for um, but there was just no way. That was the only day we use it. There was no way that I was going to pay like 15 a person every day. Like we 100% could have used it in Magic Kingdom because Magic Kingdom, oh my gosh, we went two separate days to Magic Kingdom, differing times. We stayed late till pretty much park closing one of the days and it never stops being crowded now. It's it's barely doable. It's doable at night because the sun has gone down and you're not like sweating like your draws off. But we couldn't we could barely get on anything because we didn't have Disney Genie Plus. And it's just it's tough. It's just tough to know that. And Magic Kingdom, I had a moment like the one moment of the trip where I really felt down was when we were in Magic Kingdom the second time. Couldn't get on anything like you couldn't walk two inches without bumping into somebody. And I was said to to Chris, my fiance, I was like, this was like my favorite place. And like, especially at night, it, like Magic Kingdom at night was like magical to me. It was everything to me. And it feels so, it felt, it felt a little tainted. And that was the sad point for me because it just, they've crushed so many people into these parks and, and trying to make you feel like there are limits with these park reservations. And I don't think it's true. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, I think that's exactly the thing that happened to you is I think the thing that's happening to everyone where you make your reservation and you feel like you have to because you made the reservation. Yeah. And so people who felt like they could be free to change their schedule and take a rest day, which would like influence the feel of the park. They all don't feel like they can do that anymore. And so everyone is more rigid, more like, 
I have to stick to my schedule. And if everyone's doing that, the parks are, they're not built to handle that. They're, no. they're built to handle the people who are rigid on a schedule and the person who is coming the first time, didn't do any research and has no idea what the fuck they're doing. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'm going to figure it out and I'm still going to maybe have a good time or trying. I don't know. Yeah. Like, they're not built for that anymore. You either know what you're doing or you don't come. Absolutely. And I just don't think that's right. Like my favorite feeling in Disney has always been like those days we were like, oh my God, we ended up here and we're here at the park closing and we didn't think we'd end up here today. Those are like the magical moments. And those are, so let me get into this too. I've been holding on to this story for you. Oh, baby. Oh, no. So this is related to park crowding, but um, I know that we want to talk about Enchantment, the fireworks show that will be at Magic Kingdom until Happily Ever After returns. So the two things for me are very tied. So on the day that we knew we were going to be able to catch Enchantment, we were having dinner at Liberty Tree Tavern, got out about a half hour before the show, which a lot of people would say is far too late. You got to stake out your spot early. But I'm also used to an older version of Disney World, which is if you don't stake out your spot, yeah, you're not going to get as you're not going to have as good of a view. You're probably going to be squished in with people. But it, it used to be that within reason, if you weren't um, a safety hazard and you weren't blocking people's way and, a, and you weren't in a taped off area that a cast member told you you couldn't stand or stop in, you could pretty much stop where you were and see whatever parts of the fireworks you could see. So we're trying to do just that. And we continue, we are just continually ushered onward and onward and onward. Until we find ourselves behind Magic Kingdom, behind Main Street. I've been back there before when they're letting people out of the park after the fireworks, not trying to find a spot. Time is ticking. The fireworks are going to start any minute. We're just being herded behind Main Street. And I'm like, where are we being sent? We funnel out to the end of Main Street, right by the entrance and exit. I come out. Wait till I show you all the pictures of this. It is so jammed with people. I've never seen anything like it. Where we ended up because you couldn't inch any closer. So again, even then, I'm like, I want to see this so bad. I will jam in here. I'll put my mask on. I'll do what I need to do. I want to see it. I got stuck between one of the facades of Main Street. I couldn't see a thing. I couldn't see the show. I heard it. I saw maybe a couple of colored flashes in the sky. And once again, y'all know my story about two grown men fighting in front of me in Disneyland. Mm Mm-hmm. So very nicely, the servers at Liberty Tree are amazing. She knew we wanted to get out so we could get a spot for the fireworks. So she put our coffee in little to-go cups for us. So I have mine. This man, granted, it's crowded. You, it's, you, it's shoulder to shoulder beyond. Is pissed off for whatever reason, wants to get out of the crowd. Full body checks me. Like has no regard for any other human bodies in his way to get out of the way. I spill hot coffee on me. And I'm like, oh, hello. He says nothing and he keeps going. My fiance puts his hand on him and goes, hey, you got to watch where you're going. Like not even fighting words. And this guy tries to get big with him and act like he's going to fight him on Main Street USA. I'm like, you're you're acting like that? Like to people who are, and he's this big, strong dude. And so that's how the fireworks started. I couldn't see a thing. And, you know, and I think. It's two things. Number one, it's they're letting so many people into the parks. It's just not meant to hold all these people who are stopped and trying to watch something. I have a, I think there's a more sinister reason behind the type of crowd control that they're doing. I think they're trying to get you to buy into the fireworks dessert parties and get desperate and be like, there's no other way for me to see this because I couldn't see a thing. Not a thing. I don't think it's like, oh, this is... This is just the safest thing for everyone. I think it's just there are a lot of things in place in the parks that make me feel like they're just trying to make this a less amazing experience for me so that I'll pay extra money to make it good. And that doesn't sit well with me at all. So I did not see Enchantment. Oh, damn. That was my only opportunity to see it. And from what I heard and saw, I don't think I was really missing anything. I can't wait for Happily Ever After to come back. I'm definitely going to pull it up on YouTube and watch it. But it was that was the most disappointing moment of the trip for me. That was really sad. What baffles me is I'm like, they did all that construction to the hub to make it bigger so that it can fit more people to see the fireworks comfortably and everyone has a good angle. And we still have the same issue. Yeah. 
because they made more space. So they were like, okay, we made more space so we can bring more people in. It's like, no, that that's not, that's not it. Yeah. And, and in the past, <sighs> sure. Things like wishes were different in that the castle projections weren't being utilized. So you got to be in front of the castle for these. But at the same time, Back in the day during Wishes, sure, me and my family had seen it before, but I remember one time standing behind the castle by the carousel watching Wishes from there because there was nobody standing there and it was a lovely experience. It still is magical. And you just can't have that anymore because they won't let you stop. They won't let you go where you want to go. Okay, so let's talk about some of the changes because it's been a while since you've been to Disney World. So from your experience, what is the biggest change to Walt Disney World in the time that you've been away? Besides the amount of planning you have to do, it's that truly nothing comes for free anymore. Like, I remember the days of all these things happening at the same time. Magical Express, daytime and nighttime extra magic hours for resort guests, fast passes. Like, I could go on and on. There's nothing for free anymore. There's a half hour at the beginning of the day to go early if you are staying at the resorts. We weren't trying to get up that early, so we didn't we didn't use that. And like I said, I think the planning used to be for fun, but now the planning is just absolutely necessary and you have to live by those plans. And just so I think it's all tied together. I think the way that they've structured a lot of things now puts this desperate energy into people of like, this thing is going to sell out. This park is going to fill up. This experience is not going to be as good unless I do X, Y, Z. So there's just this overall feeling of like, have I seen enough? Am I doing enough? Um, That is very, I was surprised to feel. Like fun scarcity. Scarcity. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the scarcity mentality. And I was, and I was always thinking, I I had a feeling that might happen. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to let it affect me because I'm lucky enough that I'll go again. And I've been many times. But with this new energy and a lot of new things that me and my family wanted to see, I I got trapped in it a little bit. Damn. (laughs) So I guess, well, (laughs) I guess like while we're on the topic of changes so, so someone who hasn't been before, hasn't been in a while, what do you see as the biggest hurdle? Actually, it's obviously it's everything. It's the park reservations, the the figuring out if you want to use um, Disney Genie. But all of that for me ties into the, the I think it's still called the My Disney Experience app. Mm-hmm. It's so difficult to use. It is not, the interface is not user friendly at all to the point where we use Magic Bands, not Magic Band Plus, just regular Magic Bands. And we got our tickets mailed to us. And so you want to merge them onto your magic band. And I, for the life of me, could not find the place in the app to do that. Or it was telling me I was getting an error. So I got on the phone with Disney. And the cast member who was on the phone with me, he was like, actually, it's like right here in this completely non-intuitive place in the app. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I feel so silly for not seeing that. And he was like, no, everybody has this problem. Like, it's not a very, like, intuitive place for it to be. And I'm like, well, why don't they fix it? The, like, the place where you find your reservation, whether it's park, food, or ride, in the app is in the strangest place. It's under a yeah. section called tip board. And I'm just like, what? Why isn't there a section that's called my reservations or my day? It It's not user friendly at all. And I was thinking, I was like, if I had never been, I would be beyond overwhelmed by that because it confused me. And I've been to Disney so many times. So there's some great features in it where if you've never been, there's a map and, you know, they'll give you walking directions to places, which is really nice. But the app is is tough. It's tough. Yeah. And this is, I feel like this is part of the legacy of Bob Iger because he was the one who was really pushing bringing technology to the parks, which like technology in the parks can be a good thing because you get magic band which yeah magic, magic bands band are amazing. for a lot of people like just it changes the game for them especially yeah. if you're going with kids where it's like the kid doesn't have to think about it like we we're okay we got this absolutely but then you get the interface of an app that is just like what's going on and i feel like it's been like what's going on Four years since the last time I went, which was seven years ago. Yeah. I had the My Disney Experience app and I was like, this thing is a mess. Yeah. An absolute mess. To the point where they weren't allowing you to do fast pass reservations through the My Dis- Disney Experience app because the system couldn't handle it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Ha. Um, okay, but also, so sticking with this theme of, like, changes and things like that, positive or negative ride slash attraction changes. So there have been some changes. We've got the Jungle Cruise had some changes. Philhar Magic has the new Coco scene. Runaway Railway is new since you've been there. Ratatouille, the France expansion, Cosmic Rewind. I don't know if you saw the new Finding Nemo musical. What of those did you experience? What did you think of the changes, positive or negative, for you? Yeah, so we didn't get on Jungle Cruise. Again, without the Disney Genie Plus in like 75 minutes, ugh, wasn't going to happen. So we missed that, sadly. Filler Magic, We I always do Filler Magic. It's one of my yeah, favorite so. things ever. And the Coco Edition was amazing. And I was nervous leading up to it because I was like, oh, are they going to take something out in order to put it in? But everything else is still there. No, they just added to yep, it. Yeah, they just added it in. It was beautiful. Like, oh, it's so great to have that music in this ride. I will say it looked so crisp and wonderful that – then some of the other scenes, in contrast, like, need to be freshened up a little bit. Yeah, I I was wondering if they were going to, like, sort of remaster everything. Doesn't seem like they did. It's time because it's interesting. Like, my dad and I went on, on Muppet Vision and we – and I was thinking it during the attraction and he mentioned it as soon as we walked out. He was like, why does Muppet Vision look so much crisper than Filler Magic? And it does. So I think it's time for Filler Magic to get a nice just, like, overall, like, you know, redefinition. That'd be good. but. The cocoa yeah. was delightful. Runaway Railway. Oh, my God. Yeah, Runaway Thoughts. Railway. So the amazing thing was that was the day we did Disney Genie Plus. So we didn't have to wait long. I had fun. It was it was exciting to finally get on a big new blockbuster attraction that I've just heard so much about. And some extremely cool tech is happening in there. Um, For those of you who have been on and for those of you who haven't, this isn't a spoiler at all. But um, Daisy's scene. The things that are happening with your ride vehicle, like, absolutely amazing. So cool. But, you know, it's the, – the sophistication that the great movie ride offered will just, like, never be able to be replicated. And, like, when we got off it, my fiancé was like, wow, you know, I'm really glad to see that they're making this park more focused on kids. And I was like, that's what it feels like a little bit is it just, like – I don't know. I love the song. I had a good time. I'll always have mixed feelings. It does feel like a lot of changes have been, how do we make this more kid-friendly? Yeah. Which is interesting when Universal is going the opposite direction yeah. of like, how do we appeal more towards teens and everything like that? Yeah. So it almost feels like we're, like Disney and Universal are trying to no longer compete with one another in Definitely. terms of their audience. Where it's like yeah. Universal is like, we're here for teens and adults and maybe the the rambunctious kid. And yeah. like Disney is like, we're here for kids mostly. And the families who are willing to put themselves through hell for their kids yeah. possible enjoyment. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But it's amazing how better your day gets when you pay just a little bit extra. Oh my god! And, Which, ha- and that's what a what slippery that's freaking theme. slope! It's so upsetting. Mm-hmm. It's so upsetting. But like, I, I bet you, I bet you, if you had done the paid dessert view for the yeah. enchantment, it would have been like, mm, my day would have wouldn't have been so bad. Yeah, I wouldn't have had that awful moment, and like, I wouldn't have been so upset. And that's that's the the alternative to spending money shouldn't be being sad. <laughs> what i mean like, or being body checked by someone twice your body size. checked like or like pretty much shoved out the exit of magic kingdom like that shouldn't be the alternative no no but the last thing about runaway railway i'll say too number one I'm a, i've been obsessed with the song since they first released it so it was thrilling to finally be on the ride but you know with remy's ratatouille adventure this and rise of the resistance these trackless rides they're pretty thrilling like the fact that that's the future, I can you get down with You don't know where it. it's going to go. You really don't. You really – and, like, that was exciting in that there was a lot of, you know, with those three rides, especially never having been on them before and all three of them being trackless, they were exciting because I had no idea what was about to happen. And I haven't had that experience in Disney World for a while. So that was really awesome. Like, I was very exciting. Oh, good. We found a good thing. <laughs> No, no, I have a lot of good things to say. <laughs> no, 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 I joke, I joke, I joke. So, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, the Fran- how was the France expansion? It was beautiful. Like it looks so- it's just so elegant and so nice. Like my dad Did you go had- to the creperie? We didn't sit down, but my dad got one from the window. Like my dad had his heart set on getting one and he got it and he was happy and it was delicious. Um and it's just like very like the music playing and the skyliner overhead. It's very elegant and beautiful and like 
And the fountain. The fountain. Like, beautiful. And... You know the the parts of the queue, some parts of the queue of um, Remy's Ride to Adventure are beautiful too. We had an unfortunate experience. We did the standby line, and right as we were getting assigned a vehicle, the ride broke down, and we had waited for like two hours. But they gave us a lightning lane pass to come back again later when it was back up. So we we were able to get on it quickly once it was back up again, um, and that was my mom was especially delighted by that one. It was very delightful. Like, it's just a del- delightful ride. Like, and I love Remy. So it was really great. Yeah. Now, did you do Cosmic Rewind? Did you check it out? No. And part of it was like, I ch- half of it is me being a chicken. But then the other part of it was like, I was the planner. And the person who was going to go try it out first would have been my fiance. And like, I saw the sign and the like, had sort of read the instructions for the virtual queue, but I didn't know how it worked. And He and like I was like for I think that was the day I was flustered and he was like please just don't worry about it, so that was on me. I should have figured it out. I should have figured out the virtual queue. So you didn't do any virtual queues the whole trip. No, 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 we did not. There aren't interesting many. Yeah, there aren't many. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure used to be on one, and then they took it off. Usually, whenever they debut a new ride to sort of manage the crowd, they do that. I wish they had kept it for Remy because it was so popular and again parts of that line are tough like they're small the kids in front of me were crying they were exhausted like they couldn't wait another second so i say bring well, see what i think it's interesting i feel like virtual cues are also another slippery slope because they are great but the parks are designed for people to stand in lines. Yes. Ever since you said that to me, I was like, it's so true. Like, yeah, it would be even and when more people crowded. Aren't standing oh, God. in lines, where are they going? And how does that affect your experience? It's wild. It's wild. Yeah, that's such a great point. Oh, gosh. Did you do the new Finding Nemo musical or no? No, but let me say, in terms of positive things, I have to, I don't know if there's a place for me to talk about this, so I'll talk about it now. We had the most amazing day at Animal Kingdom. Oh, holy shit. I've never heard that. Right? You wouldn't think you'd hear that from me. It made me fall back in love with Animal Kingdom. I don't know what happened. I think we went on a Wednesday where it was like the first day back at school or something was going on. When I tell you there was nobody in that park, every ride was under a 10-minute wait, including Flight of Passage. We walked on to Flight of Passage. We walked on to Flight of Passage, Navi River Journey, Dinosaur. I didn't go on Everest, but it was a 10-minute wait. We walked on to everything. And it was amazing, of course, for that reason. But then because the crowds were so much lower, like, I was able to take a picture of my parents in front of the Tree of Life with no one there. And I could look, read the little, like, pieces of paper that are, you know, in in Harambe Village, like, on on the poles and, like, see all this detail that I never have time or energy to look at because it's crowded and hot. And I fell in love, back in love with Animal Kingdom. It was the best day. It was amazing. We got so lucky. It also so helped lucky. that you had just done a big thing on Animal Kingdom too. It did because my my family was so sick of me. I was like, over to your right, you'll see what would have been blah, 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 blah. Like, I was like, the is anybody going to pay me Bowl extra for and, this? Yeah. But yeah, so we didn't catch Nemo because, and that's what's interesting too, is we sort of arrived at Animal Kingdom later that day and I was expecting the worst and it ended up being amazing. So we were too late to catch the new Finding Nemo musical, but we went on like everything else and it was it was amazing. It was so cool. So gearing things a little bit more towards the 50th anniversary celebration, what special 50th anniversary things did you feel like were must-dos for people? And what do you think is kind of like skippable? I think in general, and everybody will get to this, like Spaceship Earth and Cinderella Castle are both looking stunning. Like definitely make sure you catch in the evenings at Spaceship Earth. They'll play music and they will coordinate the lights on Spaceship Earth to like, you know, coordinate it to the music. It's beautiful. But then other than that, I think a lot of things with the 50th when I was there were overshadowed by the Food and Wine Festival and um, Halloween. Halloween had just come out like a day before we got there. So, like, I was like, oh, yeah, there, I'm definitely going to be getting a 50th treat or 50th merch, but there wasn't a lot. Like, there were, I'd seen a lot of 50th, like, baked goods that I wanted to try, but most of the things available were Halloween. But, yeah, I felt like the 50th was a little bit overshadowed by a lot of other things going on. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, right? Interesting. Yeah. 
So some more fun questions for you. Did you see any obscure characters on this trip? Nothing. Slash, who was the most obscure character? I didn't feel like I didn't see anyone specifically obscure, but um, I saw Ariel and Eric together, which I feel like is pretty rare. They were just like out and about in the World Showcase just together. Oh, interesting. Which I thought Usually was really on, cute. Like the only time you see them together is on floats. Yeah, I kind of freaked out a little because I was literally just standing there going, they're here together. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So that was exciting. And I also was walking back to the table with my like grandma and niece Lush and like, as she does in the France area, Aurora was just like walking around, waving mm-hmm. to people. Her hair looked amazing. <laughs> so just like I feel like more, I didn't see anyone unique, but I saw them in in more relaxed settings than I've seen before, which I did love. Did you see that. any of the like special things? Like, did you see Pooh with the butterfly net or anything like that? No, or I didn't see Joy, who sometimes I've heard is out there too. Didn't see her, but yeah, but in Galaxy's Edge, it's like. We followed Kylo Ren around. Um, we ran into the stormtroopers. We ran into Chewbacca. I, that's so cool. Like that that part of it is just like my parents. It was so cool seeing them see Galaxy's Edge for the first time and the how immersive it is. They loved it. They're not big Star Wars fans, but the fact that you could like follow Kylo Ren around, they loved it. It was so cool. It was awesome. What to you was sort of like an unexpected delight on the trip? Like something that you you really weren't expecting, and then all of a sudden it's just like. It just like came together. I feel like you kind of talked about it a little bit with the Animal Kingdom situation. Yeah. But I was wondering if there's something else or was there anything that you like took a risk on and it like paid off in a major way? Yeah, I think it's it's though it, I think the risks in terms of the dining reservations pay off. I've learned now and I hope everybody knows like if there's something that you've got your he- heart set on going to and you're you're reserving in advance and you don't see it. Just check back while you're there because people cancel. So, like, seeing that hoop de doo reservation pop up on all while we were on the Disney bus um, was so exciting. And my family was like, book it, book it. Like, we all really wanted to go. And so that was so exciting. And the same thing happened with Oga's. I didn't think we would get in there either. So I think just, like, taking a risk and just, like, even though I've been complaining about this very thing, of just, like, poking around the app, looking at reservations when you're waiting online – I think a lot of times it can really pay off and you can get some, you know, harder to book things. And I will say there were like a lot of like unexpected delights on this trip. Just like our room location, being able to see Disney Springs. When my mom and I walked over to Disney Springs in the morning one day, um, being able to finally get my Gideons without waiting for an hour. Like I waited for five minutes um, and was able to get in there. And that Mm. was so exciting. And... Honestly, like the the no line Animal Kingdom day was amazing. Space two twenty was a huge surprise. Um, we also got stuck on the People Mover, which was exciting for me. <laughs> um, so we were stuck up there for a while, and we got to like walk off the People Mover, and I got yelled at because I was trying to film like parts of Disney that they don't want you to see. <laughs> so that was really exciting for me. Um, we also randomly went to the Beauty and the Beast sing along in France just because it was raining. And honestly, I, I went in there and I'm like, nobody's going to sing you, along. You, you do this all the time. You did this with the Frozen sing-along too. Yeah. I, I don't know what I need to stop. I need to stop sleeping on the sing-alongs because I was like, okay, like also nobody's going to sing along. So it's just going to be. And then people sang along and looking around at this auditorium filled with like grown adults mostly. Just singing Beauty and the Beast was really <laughs> special and oh like God. very delightful. And I... Had a great time at that. And so then, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll go back to Hoop You Do because I feel like I haven't given it its moment yet. But like, oh my gosh, like I felt like emotional. It was the first time that my fiance had ever been to Hoop You Do, didn't really know a lot about it. And he said it was the best part of the entire trip. He was so into it. He like loved every second. Every joke they made, number one, it's genuinely hilarious. It's not like grown funny. It's actually funny. He was guffawing at like every joke that was made. My dad was playing the washboard. Oh my God. Me and my mom were like drinking sangria. Like it was a whole vibe. And it was so amazing to like be back there or like as an adult and like know what it did for me when I was a kid. And also just to like see these performers who are just so incredibly talented and hilarious and amazing singers and dancers. Just like it was, I would, I had gone in being like, okay, like don't hold it to too high of a standard. And it, 
exceeded every expectation that I had of it. That is one of the biggest, that, that show, that experience in Disney is such a gem and it must be protected at all costs. It was definitely a highlight for me. Last couple questions for you. What food or drink did you have that you're definitely going to recreate at home? Ooh, so you know that I've worked on the Grand Marnier at home. I still have some perfecting to do because the one in the park, mm, it just has this <laughs> vanilla note. Oh, God, it's so – me and my mom had so many. It's actually, like, embarrassing. But we were like, we're on vacation. Um, so I want to keep working on that. Um, but I made a note to myself when we were at Liberty Tree. You know, at Liberty Tree, it's all you can eat. Whatever you love, they'll keep bringing you more of. And I ate so much stuffing. And I'm fully planning on writing to them and asking for the stuffing recipe for Thanksgiving because it's the best stuffing that I've ever had. I also thought about, I mentioned the everything donut from Everglazed. I was like, how do I make this happen for me? Like I have the Trader Joe's like everything bagel seasoning, but I've decided I'm going to let that live there because it was so good and so fresh that nothing will ever be that. So I'm just going to like stay in my lane and make some stuffing, work on my Grand Marnier slushy, and like and 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 be happy with that. So that's definitely on the list for Thanksgiving. Tell me, what was the merch haul? Oh what god. Was, what was that like? It's funny like when I was coming back I was like I didn't really leave with a big ticket merch item and I was like, "Oh, look at me. I'm so mature. I hardly bought anything. Not true at all. Here's what I bought." <laughs> So as soon as I got to Saratoga Springs, I recommend this, I went with the resort refillable mug, um, especially because this one um, had the 50th on it and had a special design. And I definitely got my money's worth. Like I would drive to the main building, refill my iced tea and like go about my day. So I really recommend those. I like the resort refillable mugs. Those give me a thrill. So that was my first purchase. And then and those give you <clears throat> free drinks in the park. Is that right? Not in the park. In all of the resorts. Oh. In all of the resorts. Oh. Um, I packed so many pairs of ears that I already own, but I bought another pair of ears. So I just bought these plain <laughs> leather. I didn't have anything plain enough. So I bought these just plain leather Mickey ears, like nothing fancy. And they were very, very useful. And I'm glad that I bought them. As I mentioned, I bought a Princess Leia shirt because I wanted something Star Wars for going to Oga's Cantina that says, what does it say on it? Not your... Not your average princess, not your typical princess. I wanted something with Ray on it, but they didn't have anything. So I got some uh, some Princess Leia. I brought home a package of unbirthday tea. So they were selling this whole line of Alice in Wonderland teas everywhere. The unbirthday tea is delicious, and I've really been enjoying it back at home. All right. So I also bought, so now in Disney Springs, attached to the Christmas store, I told Connor about this already. There's a candle store now. Mm. And I feel like it's it's technically not owned by Disney, which is what's interesting. But it's it's Disney trying to like corner the market on all these small shops that sell Disney scented candles. And they'll never be candles of tomorrow. They they won't they will never be candles of tomorrow. No, they won't. And I was like they're not going to get me. They're not. And then on the last day, you know, I get I get very merch hungry on the last day. I'm trying to grab everything I can to bring home the magic. So they got me on the last day because they sell this candle that's like the smell that they pump into a bunch of the resorts, including Saratoga Springs. So they got me. I got a I got like a big like the equivalent of a three wick candle of that. I haven't burned it yet because I'm like preserving it with my life. And then this was so nice. I think my mom knew that people at one point, the big souvenir of the moment was the Mickey hand soap pump that pumps the foam into your hand shape like Mickey. Yeah. And my mom secretly bought it for me and I didn't know. But the funniest part Aww. is, note this if you want to bring this home, people. Um, you can't like bring that through security. So they pull my mom over at security at the airport and are looking through her bag and it's the Mickey soap. And the people at the Orlando airport were so nice. They were like, go out, dump the soap out. And if you want to come back through with just the container, like, we'll make sure you get through quickly. And my mom did that for me um, because she really wanted me to have the hand pump. So I have it. Aww. Thank you, mommy. She got me the. Aww. So I'll refill that with like some, you know, Bath and Body Works foaming soap. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I got I, it's a lot of small things, but um, as much as I thought I was controlling myself, like, I don't know if anybody else in my family left with, like, anything. And meanwhile, I'm, I've got, like, six things. I have to. It, I, I need to. I could have bought so much more. There was, like, a 50th candle that I wanted. But, like, 
<sighs> you have to stop the madness. Was there something that you saw that everyone was going crazy over that you like didn't understand why? Like a figment um, popcorn bucket? <laughs> honestly, the popcorn buckets I saw were really cool. So I understood. Like there was a Halloween one in Animal Kingdom. There was a Simba one. They were cool. So I couldn't even fault anyone. It was mostly like... When I finally did get close enough to see the Halloween stuff, nothing grabbed me, which is interesting because we love Halloween and Disney. And nothing would called me, but um, there was this shirt that I saw that apparently is sold out now. It's just like a white, like beige t-shirt with like scattered Mickey and, you know, characters dressed up for Halloween. And like that was flying. I saw everybody buying it and wearing it in the parks. Okay, well, we're on the last question, so I I figured we should end on something a little bit like a, huh, like a nice mm, sigh at the end of all this. So what was the best slash most magical Disney moment for you on this trip? Oh, okay. I have a good one for this. So, So as I mentioned, we were at Magic Kingdom till closing one night. And I will say, like, as much as I've, like, complained, we were able to jump onto some things really quickly at night in Fantasyland. And so we're wandering back. I hadn't been into the new Fantasyland area at all, so we went back there. So I was like, let's go back there when it's, like, deserted. Everything was closed. Like, Gaston's Tavern was closed. But it was nice to see it. Um, And so we got on the Little Mermaid ride because it was said it was, like, five-minute wait. We're like, whatever. It was less than a five-minute wait. There was nobody in the air, in, like, the surrounding vicinity. There was nobody else being loaded onto the ride. There was no one around. I have a video of like all of the clamshells behind us just completely empty. And when we got off, there's still nobody around. And as we were walking off the ride, we come out the exit and there's a cast member standing there holding two balloons and just making direct eye contact with us. And she was like, do you guys like, do you like, she kind of looked at me. (laughs) She's like, do you like balloons? And I was like, yeah, I like balloons. (laughs) and she was like well then these are for you and I was just like so like special (laughs) and like we have like a video of me like running around with my balloons but I wasn't gonna like keep it because come on it's not right there are still children in the park so I got my picture with my balloons I got my moment with my balloons and we were like okay like let's find two kids to give these to and I saw this like little girl and she was like dressed in her princess outfit I'm like oh I'm giving it to her and She saw me walking over to her with the balloon, like, making eye contact, so I think she kind of knew I was going to ask. But, like, before I could even get the sentence out of my mouth, like, do you want this balloon? Like, she didn't take it. She was so polite. She, like, looked at her mom to see if it was okay. Oh, God, I'm going to start crying. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. And she, like, her whole face lit up and, like... She, like, went, like, I, you guys can't see it because you're not watching this. But, like, she, like, lifted her hands up, like, in this, like, excited way. Like, she couldn't even hold it back. Ah, oh, and it was just, like, ah, oh, I just, I, like, I don't know. that That's, like, the that's the stuff. I got to have my magic, like, a cast member. The fact that a cast member was willing to do that for me, who was clearly a grown woman, like, with, like who a cast member allowed me to have that moment and then to be able to give that to a kid um it's just like that's that's the stuff that is the good stuff and just in general of course this cast member specifically but the cast members are just everything like every single server that we had was incredible and kind and funny and we had um a woman who does photo pass in epcot um, she stopped at our table. She heard us talking about the Morocco Pavilion. And she stopped and she gave us this whole history of the pavilion and like what it takes to upkeep it and what some of the things are supposed to be. And we found out that like she and her whole family work in Disney as photo pass folks. Just like the cast members are just like our everything and and are still just like so happy to be there. And like I pray, I pray that we that they are met with kindness every day because they're like doing truly like <laughs> the Lord's work. Like they're the, the every bit of magic that I've ever felt from cast members, like that is fully intact. I don't think that's ever gonna change. And that's so it's so amazing to know. And and everyone is just really giving it their all. And I just wanna say like that's so special. And I and despite, you know, we're on this podcast, we're always like 
you have to be critical of the things that you love. And and I'm especially I've been especially critical of a lot of the things from this trip that I've talked about because it has to do with families and their their hard earned money. And I just get really pissed about that when I feel like families. I was my I was able to go when I was a kid because it was much more affordable. And now it's not, and it really pains me, and that's why I get pissy. And so if any of this came off as, like, negative, please know, like, I am so grateful to have gone on this trip. I had so many amazing moments, and I literally, like, every time I go, I'm like, okay, this isn't going to happen this time, but it does. On the last day, I literally have to excuse myself, go to the bathroom, and, like, and like wail, but silently so that, like, my family doesn't know that I'm doing it. And every year I'm like, really? Like, I'm about to be 30 and here I am. Like, I have to leave Disney and I'm like wailing like a small child because I don't, I don't want to leave because despite, you know, the things about it that are hard and, you know, being there in the heat of August and it's crowded and it's, and it's different. It's so like, it's, it's such an escape in a lot of ways from reality. And I just want as many people as possible to be able to step away from the things that are really hard. And sure, things like COVID, like you can't escape them even in the parks. That's just like life now. But as much as people can like have that opportunity to turn off and like Connor understands more than anyone. (laughs) He was like, you're like, I'm not talking to you. Like nobody talked to her. Like I really don't, whether this is weird or not, like I don't talk to anybody when I go to the parks. Like I just need to be there and like live and, and just not be in the real world. And it's so valuable for my mental health. Like, yeah. I feel a little silly saying it, but it really is. It's like good for the soul. Yeah. And I just want everybody to have that experience. Um, and I'm so lucky that I was able to finally go back and like really go back. Like we say it, but like go back home. That's, and you know, we all have complaints about our our regular homes, right? We have things that we wish were better, but it doesn't take away the fact that it's home. So, Yeah. Well, Caroline, thank you so much for sharing all of your thoughts for doing all this research on the trip and like using this as sort of like a a guinea pig. I I mean, most of these questions are just selfish for me because I'm going in December and and I'm like, I I need to know what I'm (laughs) I'm doing. I didn't want to get too into the nitty gritty of like, we did a bit, but if people want a little bit more about the lightning lanes and genie plus and like the differences between things just like let us know because i could break that down in a post or a video um because now i have a much better understanding of it so i want to help people because it could be a little bit confusing yeah well all righty folks there you have it that's going to do it for us for this episode thank you for joining us if you liked what you heard you want to hear more things like this please make sure to hit follow or subscribe wherever you're listening to the podcast so that all the episodes download you don't miss out on the stuff because like we said at the beginning schedules might get crazy things might drop at weird times it might not be regular (laughs) sorry in advance And please remember to leave a five-star rating and a review so that other people can find the podcast. We're seen in search results. Tell a friend, tell a coworker, tell an enemy. I don't care. We'll take all of them. Everyone's (laughs) welcome here. And please follow us on social media. So we are at Poor Unfortunate Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. And we are at Unfortunate Pod on Twitter. I've been holding on to so many pictures and videos from this trip that I can now release uh, into the social media world. And I'm really excited to share with you. Also, if you want to talk even more in depth about Disney and you need some tips from people who have been and who are going, please join us in our private Facebook group, The Poor Unfortunate Fam. Um, So we've got a a group now, about 100 um, of our listeners. I know some folks are have visited Disney recently or are there right now. We would love to help and to talk more about going or just to talk about any past episodes about Disney in general, any of the news from D23. Um, it's just a way for also, you know, Connor and I to get to know you all better, to, you know, connect some faces to the names of people who are listening. Um, it's a really great place to be. And um, until you hear from us next time, whenever our new episode comes out, hopefully it will be soon, as Connor said, um, you can see Connor on your TV screen oh on God. NBC on Chicago Med. 
uh, on Wednesdays. Is that correct? Yes. On Wednesdays, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. At 8 p.m. Eastern. And <laughs> we, I know I can speak for me, but also just like the fam and just everyone. And like, we're so proud of you, Connor. And we're so excited oh for you. Gosh. Um, So Thank you. we'll be back when we can. We'll figure, we'll figure this all out, but we will be back soon. And we love you all. And thank you for, for just sticking with us. And as I always say at the end of these things, uh, it does take us a little bit of money to keep the podcast up and running and coming to you all. We do have a PayPal account. It is linked in our episode description and in the bios of all of our social media accounts. Truly, anything that you have to spare goes a long way for us. It could be a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, more than that. You can make it a one-time donation, a monthly donation. It all just goes right into the podcast so that we can keep bringing this out, keeping it free, for the most part, ad-free when we can. Uh, so if there is anything that you have, we'll we'll gladly take anything that, that you might be able to spare. And if that's not, you know, financially doable for you, that's totally fine. Keep enjoying the podcast. Tell a friend, tell a coworker, tell an enemy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, until next time, Beluga, Beluga Savruga. Savruga.